Hey there, fellas. We have got an interesting experiment in store for you in this one. Now, honestly... Now, I've never really... But then, I mean, I have noticed something that's to do with the brake system. The vast majority of cars, as we know, has ventilated brake discs, which allow air to pass through them and keep the rotor nice and cool. Now, we have already experimented with this in the past, and when you heat a brake rotor up to a really high temperature, well, the brake pad friction material starts to burn, and it starts producing gases, resulting in a sort of gas film forming between the rotor and the pads, which renders the brakes pretty much useless when they're overheated. And aside from simple ventilated rotors, you also have the cross-drilled variety. And I never thought that a non-ventilated rotor would need to be cross-drilled. But then I stumbled upon a non-ventilated brake disc that was actually cross-drilled, believe it or not. And, and I became curious to find out how effective that sort of thing would be. I mean, I've actually had a few cars with cross-drilled brake rotors. You don't even give it a second thought. Some say the point is removing debris, others that it's for optimized cooling. Anyway, why don't we try grabbing a new set of rotors, pads, throwing them onto this here automobile, and taking a drill to them rotors. Now, I'm curious to see whether there will be any difference. I really want to know how it's going to work, honestly. Will it be effective? Or not so much? Okay, let's see what comes out of this, then. Let's do this. How will 400 holes in the rotor affect braking? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. So check this out, guys. We have fitted a new set of rotors. So I'll start by driving around on stock rotors. We'll measure the temperature with this gauge, see how hot they get. Then we are going to take a drill to them and see how the braking performance changes, whether it gets better or worse. Overall, just see how they behave. Whether they get hot or stay cool, they might be way more effective than before, and barely even heat up. Whether or not that's the case, we'll find out shortly. The temperature... is quite low. 9.5 degrees Celsius, which is about ambient temperature. Might be a bit warmer in the sun, so I'm gonna be braking, and we'll immediately be taking a reading. See how hot we can get them. Here we go. Yeah, lock them up slightly in the end there. Eh, no biggie. Spray and immediately take a reading. How much is that? 95 degrees. 95? Terrific. Okay. Wow, that's pretty hot, actually. They're pretty quick to heat up. Considering the fact that near the end I... caught a patch with a bit of debris and the wheels got locked up. Unlike the final meter. But at the end of the day, the temperature was 95 degrees. So that's quite a bit of heat. Very nice. Remember that number, 95 degrees. Here's what we're going to do now. Remove Mark and drill a few holes in the rotors. Okay, let's do this. Right, we've done some drilling, and this looks like it came from a factory. Or maybe even a bit better. But then we don't know how it's going to perform. So we're drilling both rotors, and that's the end of that. Now we remove the sharp edges, fit them to the car, and try them out.
The temperature of the rotor is 12 or 14. Yeah, 2 degrees doesn't make much of a difference. Time to start the motor, get to the starting line, and here we go. Holy cow! Now that was pretty cool! We've measured the temperature, and it's at 108 degrees Celsius. So that's an increase. The rotor is getting hotter, but the braking distance has decreased. And not even slightly. That has to be at least two and a half meters. So it's not necessarily a car length, but it's not that far off either, which is cool. And what's interesting is that the pedal feel is certainly different. Yeah, it makes sense that the drilling isn't necessarily for cooling, but more for debris extraction. Anyway, so... It does stop better now, but the temperature has increased. Okay, time to remove the rotors and add another six rows of holes. Then we reinstall them and continue the testing. Let's do this. Here we go. Seventy. Come on. Holy cow. Isn't that something? It peaked at 81? Holy cow! That's great! So it's about 82 degrees closer to the middle, but it's 117 at the edge. And the stopping distance was reduced even further. It just keeps getting better and better. Now we can't keep this up forever, but we are experimenting. So let's remove the rotors and continue drilling. Let's do this. That's another 48 holes. And that is a lot of metal shavings. It's not necessarily feeling any lighter in my hands, but there's definitely some weight reduction going on. Right, let's fit the rotor and get at it. Here we go. Wow, that was very unnerving. But the car came to a stop. What do we got? 115? What's interesting is that once I stopped, we saw a temperature reading of 115 degrees, but then it started rapidly plummeting. Let's take another reading. And it only took 10 to 15 seconds for it to drop to 94 degrees. Give me that. While we're chatting, we need to measure it. Yeah, the temperature is really quick to go down. Looking at the hottest area, and look at how fast it's dropping. Very fast. Holy cow. Amazing. That is impressive. Okay, let's drill some more holes and see what comes out of that. Let's get to it. Check this out, guys. We've added 72 new holes to each rotor. 
And that brings us to a total of 168 holes on each rotor. They really look like meat grinding plates, more so than brake rotors. Let's go. See where this goes. Nope. Look at that. This time... The initial bite was decent enough, but then it felt as if I let off the brakes, which I definitely didn't do. It rolled too far, damn it. 120 at the edge, and about 110 in the middle. Another thing that's interesting is that the stopping distance has increased. So they worked well below the 100 hole per rotor mark. But once we went over, once we got to 168, the performance began to deteriorate. We still have a bit of room left. So let's remove them and drill some more holes. And see what comes out of that. Let's do this. Check this out, guys. We honestly weren't even counting at this point. God knows how many we've drilled. If you have the time, feel free to count them. But now I definitely feel the weight reduction. They've gotten lighter by how much this mound weighs. The two rotors. But the point of the experiment has changed slightly. Since there's nothing left but holes, we need to fit these to a car and see how they perform. Here we go. Eighty. Pedal is to the floor. And you know what? My speed was slightly under 80 Ks, like 78 perhaps, when I began to decelerate. What's up? What's the temperature? I am very curious. And here's what's up. 140 at the edge, 115 in the middle. That part is riddled with holes, but there is a small surface area that can slip, which the pads heat up to an enormous temperature. Here goes nothing. Come on. You can do it. Well, it stopped. Thank goodness. You really have to press down on the pedal, though. It takes a lot of force. As for the temperature reading, it was 160 on the outer edge, on the rim of the rotor. How much was it in the middle? 117. So these have gotten quite hot compared to the first few runs. This is now getting very hot. That's because there is not much metal left. It's mostly holes at this point. And whatever metal is left gets hot fast. And the stopping distance... This doesn't stop. So cross-drilling is cool and dull, but you shouldn't get too carried away. Now I suggest we try putting a bit of heat into them and see how far we can get. I'm gonna try stopping 
and pay attention to how much speed I am carrying when coming up to the cones, when I am approaching them. So I'm going to be paying attention to that. I don't think it'll be much higher than 80 k's, but I'm curious to see whether it'll come to a stop, so let's do this. That's 80. No! Stop! There we go. Now I might be mistaken, but I think I was going like 82. Couldn't have been any higher. The temperature was like 200. 200? Even in the middle. For real? Holy cow. That's fourth. Stop! I overshot the mark by just a few meters, like... I don't know, maybe 10? I was actually driving very slowly, like barely even moving. 170? 80? 82? 83? 85? Really? Stop? I thought I said stop. Hey, at least we got this sort of guardrail. And we got loads of steam. Were they really that hot? 175? Yeah, they were doused with a bit of snow. And even with that, 175 degrees. So this does indeed work. This was a DIY deal, and I felt how this improved the car's braking performance. This makes the brakes more effective, it inspires confidence, and yeah, we've given this a try, it sort of works. Mind you, we did all of our testing on the test track, not on public roads. Don't go driving with DIY cross-drilled brake rotors on public roads, because that could be a safety hazard not just for you, but for somebody else as well. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you. We've tried this out, you saw everything for yourselves. And watch us, subscribe. Send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.